What's up quarter pounders, welcome back to my channel. My name's Wave Potter and today I'm finally getting back to the warning in anticipation for the Mayday tour. I see they've already started. Saw some live footage online. I didn't watch too much of it because I don't want to spoil the concert, but I probably will end up watching it before I go to the concert. Let's be real, because how can I not? It's really exciting. Speaking of which, that's why I'm here today. I am working my way through the Queen of the, Queen of the Murder Scene album, and I'm ready to jump back on the wagon now that the new dates are set in stone and they're actually starting the tour. I want to start this video by playing a little Instagram video that I saw on the Lava Records channel where they were talking about Queen of the Murder Scene because this was really interesting to me. Queen of the Murder Scene is a concept album. It tells a story. A novel. And yeah, it was like a novel and it was a really different process writing songs to fit a narrative mm -hmm. and a plot. It was really hard. It was actually. hard because we had some and then we had to add like the filler episodes, uh -huh. but yeah. we didn't want them to feel like filler, filler songs. songs. So we really had to put meaning into every single little part. Yeah. Wow. We know the murder scene is a con. Okay, so that's really interesting. And this is what I saw this morning that really relit the flame underneath me. Like, I gotta get back to the warning today. To see the level of creativity and thought they put into this album and how they talked about how difficult it was, that's high effort stuff. Made me appreciate it more. The next song in my journey here is The One. I've done the first three songs and I have these many left to go. And I want to get through this whole album before the uh, Minneapolis date of the show that I'll be going to of the Mayday Tour. So, let's do this. Nice halftime shift there. Ooh, and that unison with the hi-hat choke, that was cool. Whoa. I love the vibe that piano adds there. Octave, piano chords, love that. Okay, I, I couldn't figure out a good place to pause it because I was trying to listen to the lyrics and take in the soundscape and everything but I love the way it opens with like the just the vocals and the bass like a deep um well, let me go back I'm at 156 let me go back here yeah oh yeah the bass and the lightly arpeggiated guitar just such a nice soundscape then it builds up, the drums come in with those sweet flam toms. Love Pow's powerful drumming style there. Like, right there. But then when the other part comes in, and there was that stereoized, uh, like, feedback, guitar feedback with reverb and panning left to right, that was so cool. Did I miss it? Oh, right here. Oh, 
Love that. Oh. I love the desperation in these lyrics. And that part is so cool. With the hi-hat choke, I just love good use of rests and unison between different instruments. Such a great combination. Heart These lyrics are intense. And this piano is so fitting. It's got that creepy, mysterious, like, dinner murder mystery party, <laughs> you know? Uh, I don't even know the right word for it. Just, I guess, murder mystery dinner party? Does that pretty much sum it up? Just that creepy vibe. I love when Pow does these kind of drums with the, uh, like a 4-4 kick, but with syncopated toms uh, doing the flams. So powerful. Gotta listen to the lyrics. Am I starting to realize in this song why the next song's called Stalker? <laughs> like, these are pretty desperate lyrics, you know? I just love the change in feel when that chorus comes in. Like, the vocal melody is comes in on a higher note than you would expect. And it catches you off guard, at least on the first couple listens. Uh, just... Like, I would expect it to be like... Gah. Okay, after this. Give me something. Like, that melody. But then it's like... Not what I was expecting. Is that just like the whole octave higher? Or is it a harmony? Ooh, those drums. I love the way the guitars are layered in this too, to really create a powerful tone. Because obviously there's only one guitarist in this band, but these guitars are layered so well to give it a huge sound. Um, love Powell's drumming style, that halftime shift in the at the end of the chorus, so satisfying. Great dynamic shift. They're good at doing that too. Making a bridge that has a great soft dynamic. They did this in their Enter Sandman cover. They've done this in a lot of their original music that I've heard. Just that really soft, um, much softer dynamics 
bridge with like some filtered vocals with like a high pass and a low pass making a very narrow frequency for the vocals and just a completely different feel to give the song the dynamic of you know keeping it fresh throughout something i look for in everything i listen to Oh, when that piano comes in, it's just so right. Nice. All right, now let's check out the live version from Live at Lunario. Danny's emotional, gritty delivery here is very powerful. Something that I have decided, even if my intent is misguided. Wow. I want to be, never mind me. Nice job on playing and singing that at the same time with all that picking. Slick adjustment on that microphone while playing. Didn't miss a beat. I'm noticing a lot more of the bass work this time around. Really interesting bass line. Man. insane how different Allie looks here than she does now like it's crazy that they basically their lives have been documented on YouTube of them growing up uh, as they work on their musical journey and career over time it's cool because they're like the more musically developed version of a lot of the artists I'm watching now that are younger that have so much potential like this and it's really cool to see that full circle thing where they have they did start out when they were younger and now look at them they're killing it doing amazing work Danny's voice is powerful. Nice. Hit that cue perfectly. Ah, oh, that is such a satisfying chord shift. Not just the piano lead there, but the way it transitions from the chorus back into this little pre-verse, post-chorus thing. Such a haunting feel. a nice effect the ride coming in in that part really 
really cool background here. That's powerful harmonies too. Oh yeah. Those halftime drums get me every time. Nice. Love the attitude behind that line. Give me something I can feel. I'm too afraid to ask. What is it I need to change for you to love me back? This is such an artistic song and album in general. Like, true artists on stage, not just performers. Whoever came up with that transition after the chorus of the na 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 is a genius. I just gotta hear that transition again. I gotta. Oh man, my guitar is gone. Okay, I gotta figure out what that interval is, what that transition is. So they go from uh, the chorus starting on D, A, B, and G, but then when it changes, it goes to that C, which before it was basically a G major, G major scale. Then it hits that C, then it goes down to B, but then instead of the A, which was in the chorus, it hits an A flat or G sharp. That is a good sound. Yeah, that really changes up the sound, gives it a much more sinister, dark feel. Love it. It's a similar interval to the chord progression in um, Evolve, where it's dun, dun, dun. just the kind of chromatic walk around the A there. Anyway, very cool performance. I'm really excited to see them live to finish this album. Uh, I got to read these lyrics again in my free time. And, well, I guess I could check them out now. The one, the warning. I'm not used to watching much music that's in English that I can actually understand. So this is pretty exciting for me. Especially with the deep story behind it. Very desperate lyrics. The theme of the song is very fitting because it's a very dark feel. You know, a dark theme. Unrequited love. Yeah, like I said, during the performance... They're not just musicians, not just performers, but true artists with this album, creating something with a theme and a narrative. And it, it was cool to hear them talk about that on that Instagram video from their documentary. Speaking of which, I haven't watched the documentary yet. Tidal Rising mini doc. I haven't watched it yet because I didn't want to spoil any music I haven't heard, but it's, it's probably safe. Like... I won't know what I'm hearing, even if I hear it. So I think I'll check it out pretty soon. I definitely want to see it before I see them live. But thank you so much for watching. Thank you to all my patrons. I just put up a ton of reactions this week on Patreon that are patron exclusive. 
and I plan to start doing that more often. I'll probably do some deep dive analysis, analysis videos for the warning over there at some point. Uh, but I'll let you know if I do that. This week I had some bandmate, Hanabie, Girlfriend, the band that I'm very sad broke up. So thank you to all my patrons for making that possible and thank you for watching. If you'd like to make specific requests of songs that I check out, you can always join my Patreon or my YouTube membership or visit my website. Those are all always linked below. That's where I'm going to wrap it up. So thanks for watching and I'll talk to you next time.